Mr. T here with a tutorial called Complex Numbers. So it's a bit of a bizarre topic, and uh, but don't panic just because the name sounds complicated. Uh, if you just follow the basic rules, this topic is not overly difficult. Uh, let's talk about or introduce complex numbers first by looking at this problem here, a quadratic equation. Now, uh, if you remember when we talked about difference of two squares, a sum of two squares here was not factorable. But maybe we could solve this by using our square root method, so we get the x squared by itself. And then we square root both sides, taking both the positive and the negative square root of negative 16. But th at this point, we would end up stopping and saying no solution because in our set of real numbers there is no square root of negative 16. There is no real number that if we multiply it times itself can be a negative number. Now the fact that we had equations like this, fairly simple equations that couldn't be solved was a problem for a lot of applications of mathematics especially in sciences and physics. So a solution was invented in the I guess as long ago as around 1552 or 1572, but it didn't start becoming into widespread use until the mid to late 1800s. But a mathematician invented a new number called the imaginary number or the imaginary unit, and it was defined such that i squared equals negative 1. Now if we take the square root of both sides here, we would get i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Now this particular definition of the imaginary unit uh, can be problematic if we apply some of our old rules about radicals. So this is the more uh, common definition of the um, imaginary unit. Again, the i stands for the imaginary unit. Now this name, imaginary, was given by some mathematicians originally because they thought this was kind of heresy and they ridiculed the uh, invention of this number and it wasn't really accepted for quite a while and that name has uh, stuck. So if we go up here, now we've got the square root of negative 16. We could factor that into the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1 and so we now get 4 and by definition this is i. So this could be our solution up here so if we use these new numbers the solution to our equation would be plus or minus 4i. So a set of numbers once we invented this one single new number a whole classification of numbers was created and I'll come back to that previous slide in a minute. So this whole classification of complex numbers was created. So we've got our real numbers and then we have complex numbers which as are shown over here look like this. Each complex number has two parts. It has a real part and an imaginary part. Now we'll come back to this in a minute. I wanted to talk a bit about here the power of i. So i has some interesting properties let's start to look at here. So let's start here with our definition i squared equals negative 1 and i to the first would just be i and i to the 0 power remember anything to the 0 power is 1. So let's keep going. So i cubed is i squared times i which would be now i squared we just said was negative 1 times i, or we get negative i. i to the fourth would be i cubed times i, which is i cubed here was negative i times i, so we get negative i squared, and i squared is negative 1, so we get negative negative 1, or we get positive 1. So this i fourth was the same as i to the 0. Let's keep going just a little bit. i to the fifth would be i to the fourth times i, 
We just said i to the fourth was 1, so we have 1i or i. i to the sixth is i to the fifth times i, which is i times i, which is i squared, which is negative 1. Uh, and we'll keep going just a second. Bear with me here. Now we just said i to the sixth was negative 1, so we have negative 1 times i. We get negative i. i to the eighth and we get i to the seventh times i, which is negative i times i, which is negative i squared, which is positive 1. So if you look at this, starting at power 0, we go 1, i, negative 1, negative i. And then we're back to 1, i, negative 1, negative i, 1. So every fourth power of i, we keep repeating. There's a classic problems on like SAT test of wondering what is maybe i to the 3,587th power. Now you might think, oh, I've got to keep doing this for a long time, and that's not going to work. But if we look at here at i to the 7th, let's look at that first. If I take 7 and divide that by 4, sorry, I want to do a division, not a square root. So 4 goes into 7 one times. You gotta remember your long division here, and we get a remainder of 3. So that means i to the 7th was i to the 4th one time times i cubed. That's our remainder. i to the 4th is 1. 1 to the 1st is 1, so we end up getting i cubed, which by definition here was negative i. So let's try this one. The power of this is going to be the remainder. It's going to be the equivalent to the remainder when I divide 3587 by 4. So if I divide 35, oh, 3587 by 4, and 4 goes into 35 8 times. I've got 3, I bring down the 8. 4 goes into 38 9 times. 9 fours are 36. Now we've got 27, that goes uh, 6 times, 24, and again we got a remainder of 3. So that tells us that this is equivalent to i cubed, and from our base powers here, i cubed is negative i. So if you get on your next SAT attempt or whatever, or when you try this in the spring, maybe you can remember this on how to create this problem. Now we're going to be dealing with mainly i squared in our problems. So as I said, we've got these complex numbers. So something like 3 plus 2i is a complex number. 7 minus i would be a complex number. But real numbers are also all complex numbers. So if I had the number 8, I could write that as 8 plus 0i. Purely imaginary numbers, like 3i, are also complex numbers because I could write it like this. And square root, as we showed a minute ago, of like negative, uh, let's say 24, that's a 24 there, we would rewrite that as square root of negative 1 times the square root of 24. Remember, this can be, be reduced. We can divide that by 4. And 6, so now we got i times square root of 4, which is 2, times the radical 6. Now, by convention, when we write these, this can be uh, i2 looks weird. When we write a complex number with a radical, we're going to put the, any integers in front of the i and the radicals after. Now, remember, this was i times 2 times radical 6. Multiplication is commutative, so we're going to be using that order. Again, these are all complex numbers. One application of uh, complex numbers that's pretty interesting, at least to look at, is generation of art using something called fractals. You might want to do a little research. A lot of computer graphics for animation on uh, movies and things uses backgrounds are generated using fractal math. They can genera generate uh, mountains, coastlines, forest trees, so you might want to look up a little bit on the art. Now these, these pictures here are computer generated and using complex numbers. So let's wrap up here with uh, 
you know, if we have a number system, we have to have a set of math operations on that. So we have to be able to, for example, add and subtract complex numbers. We have to multiply them, divide them, and find their absolute value. So I put an example over here of each. Uh, they're fairly simple, so we're not going to go through a lot of examples. The skills that we use in simplifying polynomial expressions can be used here. You can think of this as combining like terms. So we combine the real parts together and we combine the imaginary parts. So as we can see here, if I combine this, 3 plus 5, the real parts, is 8. And the imaginary parts, we have 2 and negative 3, so we get negative 1i or negative i. When we do subtraction, we'll do just like we did with the polynomials. We'll distribute that minus, and we don't really need this parentheses here, but I'm going to show it because these are like individual numbers. So I'm going to have here negative 5 plus 3i. And now I'm just going to combine the like terms. So 3 and negative 5 is negative 2. And 2i plus 3i is 6i. So adding and subtracting straightforward. I don't think you'll have any issues with that. Multiplying, we're going to use the distributive property or FOIL. But in a minute, you'll see a little twist. So let's first out start by doing FOIL. So if we take the first, 3 times 5 is 15. The outsides, 3 times negative 3i would be negative 9i. 2i times 5 would be 10i. And then here we have 2i times negative 3i is going to be negative 6i squared. And we would combine our like terms here. Now here's where we've got the extra step. On complex numbers, we're never going to have in the final answer a power of i other than 1. And by definition, i squared equals negative 1. So we can replace this i squared with negative 1. So that i squared becomes negative 1. So this becomes minus 6 times negative 1. But minus 6 times negative 1 is plus 6. So that's now a real part. So we can combine the 15 and the 6. And our final answer here is going to be 21 plus i. Again, that's the product of those two complex numbers. So again, you're going to, when you multiply, you're going to use FOIL. But if there are any i squares in the problem, you're going to replace the i squared with negative 1 and then simplify. Now before we do division, we have to talk about something called a conjugate, a complex, con complex conjugate. These two numbers are complex conjugates. So for example, if I had 3 plus 2i, its conjugate would be 3 minus 2i. So we take the opposite of the number of the imaginary part. So if we had 6 minus 3i, its conjugate would be 6 plus 3i. Now what we're interested in is if we multiply a complex number times its conjugate, what do we get? Now let's first do it with a number. So I've got 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i. Now we could recognize this as a factoring of a difference of two squares, but let's just go ahead and use FOIL. So th the outsides, I mean the firsts are 9. The outsides are 3 times negative 2i, so I get negative 6i. The insides are plus 6i, and our last are going to be negative 4i squared. Now those cancel out, and again we're going to replace the i squared with negative 1. So negative 4 times negative 1 gives me plus 4. So now I add to the 9, and I get 9 plus 4, or I get 13. Anytime you multiply a complex number times its conjugate, you're going to get a real number with no imaginary part. And in particular, what we're going to get here, if we look at it with the letters, is we're going to get the real part squared plus the coefficient of the imaginary part squared. So let's look at that. So a plus bi times a minus bi. Remember, that's the difference of two squares pattern. Let's go ahead and do the full FOIL. 
this should be minus here. Let's fix that. If I do FOIL, the order doesn't really matter, but let's be consistent here so I don't confuse you. So I'm taking A times that. Now we take those two together, and I can rearrange the A and the B because it's commutative. And then we do the last, I get negative B squared, I squared. Those cancel out. We're going to put a negative 1 in for that. So negative 1 times negative is positive. So I end up with A squared plus B squared. Now remember the B is the number in front of the imaginary unit. It does not include the I. Now we're going to use this fact about conjugates to do division. So there really isn't division. Recently we did matrices. They didn't have division. What we want to do is turn the denominator into a real number. So we can do that by multiplying it by its conjugate. But we have to, if we multiply a denominator of a fraction by something, we have to multiply the top by the same thing. This in concept is similar to what we recently did with radicals when we divided a radical. So if we have this problem here, our procedure says I'm going to multiply the bottom. So I'm just going to put parentheses around these so that we can see that we're foiling. We're going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. On the top, we will just foil that out so we get 15 uh, plus 9i plus 10i plus 6i squared. And on the bottom, we know we're going to get, since these are conjugates, we're going to get a squared plus b squared. Now, if you forget that, you could FOIL that out. So a, a is 5, so 5 squared is 25, and the 3 squared is 9. Now, this on the top, we're going to replace with a minus 1. So I've got negative 6 here, so negative 6 plus 15 is 9. And then I've got 19i divided by 34. Now we want to write this in the form of a complex number, a plus bi, so we're going to divide out by the 34, so 9 thirty-fourths plus 19 thirty-fourths i. Just make sure when you do this to check whether either of those fractions can be reduced. So this is our answer for our original division problem that we started with here. Again, we sort of Instead of rationalize, we kind of realize our denominator by multiplying by conjugates. And finally, to wrap up absolute value, I didn't talk about graphing complex numbers. They're graphed on something called the complex plane. And you can look in your book about that because we're not going to really be graphing those. Uh, but absolute value, when we do a number line, is the distance to zero. And for complex numbers, when we're on the complex plane, the distance of this complex number from the origin is the definition of the absolute value. And you can easily show that that can be derived using the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. We're just going to memorize this formula here. If you want to look that up, you can. So here, the absolute value of 3 plus 4i would be 3 squared plus 4 squared. We get 25. Here it's going to be 3 squared plus negative 4 squared which is also 25. Now since real numbers are complex numbers, that has to still work out. So here we've got negative 3 squared. Oh, I forgot to take the square root of these. Oops. So square root of 25 is 5. So my absolute value of that was 5. Sorry. Here my absolute value is 5. Here I've got negative 3 squared plus 0 squared, and I've got to take the square root of that. So I've got the square root of 9, which is 3, which would be consistent with the absolute value of a real number. And lastly, if we do a pure imaginary number, we're going to get for that, we're also going to get 3, because it's going to be uh, negative th square root of 0 squared plus negative 3 squared. It's going to be the square root of 9 or 3. So we've been through all of these. So you know, good luck when you practice the problems doing these operations. And in the next video that we do, we'll be using these complex numbers to go back and solve quadratic equations that used to have no solution. Because now all of those quadratics are going to have solutions using complex numbers.
and talk to you on the flip side.